me if I repeat it wrong. Uh, uh, the lady was asking how you argue these points to Protestants who begin to quote scriptures to you, like do not call anybody father, and so forth and so on, and, and oppose the Orthodox Church uh, with some of the more typical Protestant questions as thoughtful people and so forth, correct? Well, there are specific answers to all those questions, but I'm going to answer this in a rather different way. Most, most Protestants have no clue uh, what the Bible is because they've never actually studied the Bible. They've just studied this magical book, and they take verses out of it, and they make arguments about it. What do I mean by that? The Bible is not the Book of Mormon. It did not come down on a golden tablet. It actually has a human history as well as being divinely inspired. The New Testament, for instance, did not come out of the sky uh, two minutes after Christ uh, ascended into heaven. The New Testament was formed over a 400-year period when there were many, many Gospels floating around, like the Gospel of Thomas, Gnostic Gospels, many letters from apostles uh, claiming to be apostolic, some real, some false. And the Bible was edited. Now, who was the Bible edited by? How did the New Testament book become canonical. And this is something that Protestants, uh, the type of Protestants that quote Bible verses and proof text, the normal sort of fundamentalist, charismatic type Protestant, doesn't really want to get into this area because actually then they get on very shaky ground uh, of the Protestant way of looking at the Bible. Because the minute you actually get into the studying the Bible itself and how it came about, you have to begin studying the church. And you have to understand that without the authority of the church, the scriptures themselves have no authority. It would be the same as someone coming to you, uh, saying to you, I've read Frank Schaeffer's book, and I disagree, uh, or I agree with this passage and quoting it to you. And then uh, you both are in an argument, but I happen to be standing there. And I say to both of you, wait a minute, I wrote this book, um, and I edited this book. Now I'll tell you what I meant by it. Those words would have different weight than you and your friend arguing, correct? Now, the church predates the scripture, literally, when it comes to the New Testament. If you don't believe that, who do you think the epistles were being written to? They were being written to churches. What were those churches believing if your faith is based on the Bible only? Well, were they heretics? No, because that's who the early church was when it was founded. They were Christians carrying on the apostolic tradition they were taught. How was the Bible and the New Testament itself formed? It was formed because the fathers of the church, people like Irenaeus, uh, people like Athanasius, at different periods of history, Athanasius, for instance, being the one who fought to include the book of Revelation when the rest of the church wanted to leave it out, fought for certain books and eliminated other books on the basis of what? Magical revelation? No. On the basis of the tradition that had been passed down from the beginning, believed everywhere by all Christians. And so, for instance, the age of a particular book of the Bible did not give it authenticity. You had Gnostic Gospels actually older or as old as the Gospels that are included. You had, you had things purporting to be letters from Paul, maybe actual letters from Paul and for others, epistles that the church read for a while and then abandoned and no longer included in the scripture. So when Irenaeus of Leon was asked by a heretic, why is it some Bible books are in the Bible and other Bible books aren't in the Bible? Why are some scriptures considered canonical and part of the New Testament and others books back? No. He didn't write back a theological answer. He wrote back a practical historical answer. He said the books we've included in the scripture are the books that were regarded as authentic by the earliest churches and that have been held by them from the beginning. It would be like coming to me saying, your father Francis Schaeffer was a famous author. Here's a new book that says it's a Francis Schaeffer book. It was just published and he died in 1984. Did he really read it, write it or not? I wouldn't have to do a theological argument about it. I could do it two ways. I could look at it and say, look, I knew him his whole life. This is not what he believed. I don't care whether the handwriting was forged. I know that my father was pro-life. And here you've got a book purporting to be by Francis Schaeffer that's pro-abortion. I don't have to read more than the first word. It doesn't belong in the canon of his work. Not scholarship. I knew the guy. Okay? Or I could go about it another way and say, look, I'll check. I happen to have all his old manuscripts or copies of them in my attic. I'll go see if this is there. And that was exactly what Irenaeus said. He said, Either we've got a copy of this epistle in our attic, literally, because these were the early churches to which the 
the scriptures were written or passed around. We're talking about the New Testament. Or the councils of the bishops who had the words of the apostles still ringing in their ears or had been taught by men like Polycarp, who, for instance, in his case, had known John, said, this isn't what John taught. This can't go into the New Testament. We don't care who you say wrote it or how old it is. We know what was taught. So when a Protestant uses the most ironic thing in the world is to take New Testament passages, or Old Testament for that matter, because it was the church that the translation into Greek, the Septuagint, that was the Old Testament that Christ himself used, to use the scripture against the church, which is the editor and the defender of scripture, is totally ridiculous. So whatever that verse means, it does not mean something that contradicts the very people who edited into the New Testament as part of their tradition on the basis of the fact that it upheld that tradition. Now having said that, when it comes to all these individual issues, whether it's that particular verse taken out of context, or this particular verse, or another, then there's another discussion. But that's a discussion to have in a small group, and, and someone like Father Nasser, or, or, or any of the other priests in the Orthodox Church, or lay people who have done any studying at all, can answer those individual questions. But that's not really the answer. The real answer is, let's get something established here. This proof-texting method of reading scripture that Protestantism developed after the Reformation, when it cut itself off from the Latin tradition of the church, not even the Eastern tradition, just the Latin and Western tradition, is absurd. Because if the Bible can be reduced to a series of proof-text verses, then you could take verses out of the Old Testament saying that uh, the angels came down and had sexual relations with the sons of man and created these things and found a whole weird cult on that one verse taken out of context, stripped of the meaning of the whole Old Testament. Or you could reduce the whole of salvation to a so-called born-again experience because 90% of the New Testament, Christ is telling people that they will be saved if they feed the hungry and clothe the, the naked and believe in him. And this one verse can be lifted out and you've got a whole new theology on it. And that's what happens when you divorce scripture or any part of it from the history of scripture. Protestants have concentrated on Bible study to the exclusion of all else, including history. And the price they've paid is they've been left with this magical book. And this magical book has actually become something idolatrous in the sense that it's almost worshipped as if it itself was what saved you. So a lot of Protestants will say, well, I believe in the Bible. Well, let me tell you something. A Christian who understands Christianity does not believe in the Bible. A Christian believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the Bible is a secure and sure report. But it's a book. And the tradition that we believe that Jesus gave us is the tradition of the church against which he said the gates of hell would not prevail. And the, and the Bible is part of that tradition and one of the ways you verify that tradition. And so um, this whole thing of where Protestants take the scripture uh, and, and quote it as if what was new was this thing called the Orthodox Church and it had to be compared to the Bible is insane. It's like someone taking one of my novels and contradicting me in a liter literature class in a college that I might teach Say, no, we know what you really meant. Well, wait a minute, I am the author. I got my notes here. I know exactly what I meant. Um, and that's exactly the position of the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church is the compiler and the editor of Scripture. In fact, it goes beyond even the New Testament. The Jews did not have a canonical Bible until 100 years after the death of Christ, when the Pharisees finally got together and said, we're sick of this cultic Christian group. Uh, stealing our scriptures and quoting from them because they, they're using the Septuagint. So let's close the canon so they can't add any more books to it. And so the, the Jewish scripture itself was not closed until a hundred years into the Christian era. And it was the canon of the Jewish scripture was closed in reaction to the fathers of the church who were telling the Jews, here's what the Bible is, Old and New Testament. And they were so pissed off by that that they closed the canons and that's it. No more books are being added because these Christians are off on this wild tear here uh, doing all this stuff and adding, and adding books. So that when Protestants talk about the scriptures if it came down from heaven on this golden tablet, it's very annoying to me because it means they haven't even bothered to read the history of the book that they, they supposedly quote from so much. Okay, so that's a question. <laughs> but anyway... Yes, ma'am.